Amen. Oh, there we go. I praise God. Stand to your feet, people of God. Anybody love the Lord Jesus Christ this morning in the house of God? Amen. I feel joy. I feel peace. I feel Jesus in this place. Does anybody agree with me in the house of God? Amen. Hey, pray for me as I pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you today. I lift up your people into the courts of heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Every single person that walked through those doors is covered by the anointed, precious, majestic, royal blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I pray, have your way in this place, Father God. Lord, miracles, signs, and wonders follow us as believers in Jesus Christ. And the word of God will not fail, but accomplish every purpose which you set it forth to do. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Give the Lord one more mighty hand clap, just because he's worthy, amen. And be seated in the house of God. I want to be obedient. Please, everybody, for a moment, just uh, close your eyes for a moment. Our heads. I, I need to address something, amen. I felt something in my spirit as so I was down there, amen. And I want anybody looking around. I, I want to address this to a person, a particular person. I don't know if it's a younger person. And it's a very serious thing, but I want to address it, amen, because I, I don't want the enemy to lie to you, amen. Please heed my words. If today you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, that the thoughts have entered into your mind to take your own life. Amen. I want you to know that the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. And there is no truth in him. Amen. If you, if you don't have your mother, if you don't have your father and you feel like nobody wants you, I'm here to tell you that the Lord wants you. I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to be recognized. If you want prayer, you can come afterwards privately and just tell me that it was you. Amen. But Heavenly Father, we come in agreement for that person, Father God, who is struggling, who the enemy has tried to lie to and put those thoughts of suicide into their mind, God. Father, we bind that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord. But we thank you that you have come to bring life, Lord, with all its abundance, Father God. For your desire is that none should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life through the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary. So, Father, we put that person into your hands. We lift them up before you, Father God, and ask that you would be their helper, their comforter, and their healer in their times of need. The Lord loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. And nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And amen. So I just want to take a few moments to address that. Amen. Today's message is entitled the, the theft of the word or has someone stolen the God's promises to you? Amen. Let's begin in Colossians 2 verse 15. We'll begin there. And this is Jesus. And when he had disarmed the rulers and authority, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. Okay, so I'll, just to give you a picture of what happened, amen. So when Jesus died on the cross, the devil thought that he had won. He was rejoicing with the demons of hell that we won, we beat him, we silenced Jesus. But I'm here to tell you, people of God, that the word of God cannot be silenced. The word of God cannot be killed. The word of God cannot be held down. And guess what? The devil thought that Jesus was down for the count, but he got up. And when he got up, he disarmed principalities and powers, and he made a spectacle of them as our general. He took them to a public square and paraded them and said, look, look at those that thought they had the advantage against my children and my people. Amen. But now guess what? When Jesus came out of the grave and he ascended, the word says that he gave gifts to men. What did he give us? He gave us a fighting chance, people of God. He gave us promises. He gave us weapons, spiritual weapons. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Amen. So God stripped the enemy of lies, stripped the enemy of deception, stripped the enemy of all the evil things he could use against us and made a procession, a triumphal. He poked fun at him in front of everybody and said, look, this is the one who thought that he had beat us. The one, but the word says, praise be to God who always leads us in triumph and victory in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We know what the end of the book says. They overcame him by what? The blood of the lamb 
and by the word of their testimony. So 2 Corinthians 6, 7, in turn, this is what happened after Jesus. In speaking the word of truth, in the power of God, by the weapons of righteousness on the right hand, like holding the sword to attack, and on the left hand holding a shield to defend. So Jesus comes up, he gives gifts to man. What does he give us? He gives us spiritual weapons so that we are able to stand the evil day and combat Satan on his own terms. Because Satan is not a physical person. He is a spiritual person. Demons, spirits are not flesh and blood. That's why the Bible is very clear and says this. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You're not fighting against your tío or your tía, amen, or your cousin or your brother or, your, or this person or that person. You're battling against a spiritual entity. And the only way to combat spiritual entities is with spiritual solutions. Thereby, Jesus, when he ascended, gave gifts to men and gave us weapons for attack on the right hand and weapons for defense. Now, what weapons did he give us? Jesus gave us the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Notice it says on one hand, on the right hand, he gave us a weapon to attack. What is that? Ephesians 6 says he has given us what? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, by which we can combat the evil one. Amen. Yeah. On the left hand, he has given us what? A shield to defend. A shield of faith. Faith in what? Faith in God's word. Wow. Psalms 18 says this. God's word is a shield or, to those who put their trust in him. God's word cannot be broken. God's word cannot be altered. God's word cannot be changed. So what happens? The devil knows this. The devil knows he was defeated. The devil remembers that he was made a public spectacle in front of all the hosts of heaven. So what does he do? He says, I only have one opportunity to defend, to defeat the people of God. And that is to steal the word of God, to steal their promises, to steal what God says about them. If I can stop them from doing that, they will never have victory in Christ Jesus. And so the enemy holds people captive, prisoners, amen, by this, by stopping them from knowing God's word and what God has said. Simple as that, because look, let me tell you something. As a young person, I know young people are looking like I'm crazy, amen. That's okay, I'm crazy for God, amen. When I was young and my parents took, I didn't want to go to church. Can I get a, can I get a witness in the house, guy? Anybody remember those days? Or my grandma, <laughs> my grandma. <laughs> My dad's mom, she's with the Lord now. She was a believer, Angelita. Thank you, Grandma, for praying for me. Amen? I remember, mijo, vamos a la iglesia. It's in Spanish, for one. I mean, I know Spanish, but I, I don't. Ama, I would call her ama. I wouldn't call her abuela. Ama, no quiero ir. I wouldn't say that because it would break my grandma's heart. So I went, and there I was, hearing the word. Hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word. My uncle would come around. He's a minister, he's a Baptist minister. He's still preaching, praise God. And he would, he, would, he would want to make us quote scripture. Oh, here we go again. Here he comes with the word of God. What's the big deal with the word of God, Theo? I don't want to know about it. You know, the only reason I memorized it was that he would get off my back. <laughs> I go, at least if I memorize something, he won't ask me about it again. And I remember the day, well, do you know anything? Well, the, yeah, the word of God says there's no work or, or thing to do in the grave that we're going to. He looked at me shocked like, oh, this guy actually knows something. <laughs> it was a mistake because then he kept asking me about the word. <laughs> He's like, oh, so you like the word, you know the word. So it had the reverse effect. Amen, people of God. <laughs> Can I tell you something? When God has a plan for you, when God has something for you, if God told you he's going to do something, if God, if God has chosen you and called you, and, he, and we all have gifts and callings, people of God. But can I tell you something? I want you to receive this. I want you to take this into your being. If God has a plan for you, if God has told you something, he's going to do something for you, nothing can change that. No one can change God's mind. No one can change God's heart. Once you have God's heart and you know his word, he knows that you believe and the enemy knows you believe. There's nothing on this earth that can stop the word of God from coming to pass. And so the word is valuable, but people don't realize this. The word is so valuable. Why? Because people don't realize this. Okay. When the enemy comes to and he's a thief, right? Jesus makes it very clear. The enemy, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. What? The promises of God. The word of God. So that the people can never believe. But Jesus, on the other hand, he's on the other hand field saying this. But I have come that you may have life with all of its abundance. How? How will we supply life? Through his words. Even Peter reckoned, he says, Lord, where else will we go? You alone have the answers to bring what? Eternal life. Amen. And so the enemy attempts to steal the word from us. But look, what I want you to see is this, okay? Because I feel many are stuck in this position. You have stopped proclaiming the promises of God in your life. 
and thereby the enemy, whether you know it or believe it or not, has deceived you and has taken the words from you. Jesus wrote a parable all about it. I know we've ever heard it. Amen. Praise God. It's called the parable of the sower. I'll talk about it right now. Amen. But some of you today have stopped believing in the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. You stop believing. You stop praying. You stop preaching to yourself. Because sometimes, can I tell you something? You got to preach to yourself. Ain't nobody going to do it. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Can I tell you something? I don't have a preacher there with me encouraging me 24-7. So what do I got to do? Like David, what, what do I got to do? I strengthen myself in the Lord my God. You think I have Pastor Elia or Pastor Marlon or somebody always on my side 24-7, you know, preaching to me? I, I, that'd be awesome, right? But we don't. But who do I have? Who do I have 24-7 that's interceding for me in heaven right now? Jesus lives to make intercession for me and for you. And he is my encouragement in my times of need. Because can I tell you something? There's times that you're going to go through battles and things nobody knows. But Jesus, he knows. And he knows what you need. And if you're in trouble today, if you've gotten yourself in a mess, anybody ever get themselves in a mess or a pickle, as my deals would say? This is quite a pickle, quite a dilemma. If you have gotten yourself in a mess today, can I tell you something? There is somebody who can go in there on a mission to get you out. His name is Jesus his name is Lord, and he has the power and authority to deliver you out of your situation. He has the power and authority to heal you. And, and this is what I want to say. God gave you promises. When I was young, and I didn't realize the value, and I, I shunned the value of the word of God, because I, I didn't know. I didn't know any better, just like all of us. When I, finally, when I finally encountered God, and I began to appreciate the word of God, because I was lost and I was broken and I needed to know, I needed to know for myself what God said about me. Anything was better than the way that I was feeling at that moment. Feeling broken, feeling alone, feeling trapped in my mind. Any of you ever felt trapped in your thoughts and your mind? Can I get a witness in the house of God? Any of you talk to yourself, amen, and you're arguing with yourself, amen? I hated being in that position. I hated it with a passion. The, the fire of a thousand suns. I hated being trapped as a prisoner of my own mind. I hated it. But I did not have victory until I surrendered my life to Christ and surrendered my life to reading the word of God and absorbing the word. And then those thoughts and those words of God became my thoughts, became my word and my train of thought. And I was free from being a prisoner of my own mind. Amen? If you need healing for your body, it's in the word of God. The word says that his words are life to those who find them, health to the flesh and strength in the bones. Today, maybe you're struggling with fear and the enemy loves to use fear. That's his main tactic, his main tool. But the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love and sound mind in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love that everything goes back to Christ Jesus. Amen. Our life is with Christ. Our real life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. So what is it really? What is it truly that the enemy is stealing? He's stealing God's promises to you. He's taking your healing, people of God. He's taking your deliverance, people of God. He's taking your peace of mind, people of God. He's taking your blessings, people of God. He's taking your promotions, people of God. He's taking your life, people of God. That's what the enemy steals when you fail to receive the word and to absorb the word and to read the word and to meditate on the word of God, the enemy or has already won. He's already beat you. Why? Because you don't even bother to read what God says about you. You take, <laughs> you take other people's word over what God says about you. You'd rather hear from somebody else what they think about the situation than going to the person who made you, who created you, the creator. Imagine that. I'm going to go to a person that's basically dirt because we're all made of dirt. And I'm going to ask him what he thinks of us. Instead, that I can ask God who knows my future, who knows my past, who knows what's going to happen, who cares about me, who wants to give me hope in the future. I can ask him why would I want to ask somebody else what they think when I can go directly to God through the blood of Jesus Christ and ask him, Lord, what do you think about this situation? And he'll respond. Amen. Because the Lord said, seek my face. And my heart said to you, Lord, your face, I am seeking God. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Amen. 
Hebrews 1.3. People of God, do you know that right now at this moment, everything you see here before you, me, my life, your life, this church, this city, the cities around us, the world itself, do you know that it is being held together by the breath and the word of God? Do you know that? Truly, have you ever thought about that? The sun is the radiance and the only expression of the glory of our awesome God. Reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being the brilliant light of the divine and the exact representation and the perfect imprint of his father's essence and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word, carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. When he himself had no other by an offering himself on the cross as a sacrifice for sin, accomplished purification from sins, established our freedom from guilt. He sat down revealing his completed work at the right hand of the majesty on high, revealing his divine authority. People of God, I need you to really think about this. Do you know that right now, this, everything in our life is being healed together by one word, by God's word. But do you know, <laughs> you gotta think about this. From one second to the next, God will tell the angels of heaven, it is time and speak a word and guess what? All this will end. Imagine that one word, all it takes is one word from God. And all this, what you hold dear in this life, your, 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 your hobbies, the things you like to do, all these little things, all those things will pass away in the blinking of an eye. And from one moment to the next, we'll be here on earth. And one second then we'll be in heaven with God. Through one word spoken by God. Amen. Matthew 24, 35. I think, I think you use it right now, brother. Thank you for stealing my message, brother. Thank you so much. Heaven and earth as we know it now will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So even after this earth fades and everything is thrown into the sea, the word of God will remain right where, is that, where it's at. It will not change. It will not alter. The heavens will pass away. The earth will pass away, but his word will stand where it's at. It will never be changed. It will never be moved. Amen. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active and it is full of power. Everybody say full of power. Full of power. Making it operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit. The completeness of a person. Does anybody need to be complete today? And of both joints and marrow the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. When I was young, I did not understand what this meant. I thought that the Bible was just words on a page that somebody had, had written, but can I tell you something? The word of God that was imprinted on those Bibles, right? The original text <laughs> did not go through a computer and get spit out, amen? You know, the very first words that were given were actually given to Moses. There was no computers back then. Anybody, there was no IBM, Apple, anybody in the house of God. Can you agree with me on that? Amen. Moses went 40 days and 40 nights. He was fasting and he was on Mount Sinai. And in those 40 days and 40 nights, God poured out his spirit on Moses and gave him the 10 commandments, which he presented to Israel. Can I get a witness in the house of God? To show you the effect that the word of God has on a person, man. Do you know, my God, when Moses, he was 80 some years old, right? It says that he, he had the vigor of a young man. It says that his eyesight had not diminished. I mean, I think one of you, I mean, I'm already like 40 something, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm already like, I tell I think I need glasses, babe. I'm over here looking at the, <laughs> I find myself looking more and more like this at the phone. Like I used to like see people and think, ah, that's funny. And now I'm the one like. Every time you take the kids to the doctor, I see the chart. I'm like, A, F, B, R, C, A. I still got it, babe. Ah. <laughs> but Moses, 86 years old, because he had been exposed to the word of God, to the Holy Spirit, amen. His vigor had not diminished. His eyesight was the eyesight of a young man. You know, when he died, when God told him that it was time to die. You ever think about that? He didn't die of, of, you know, God said, it's time. And the word says that God himself buried Moses in an undisclosed location. 
Why? Because the word of God sustained Moses for those 80 plus years amen, and gave him strength and gave him power. His life did not pass until God said, it's time for you to pass. It's time for you to come out of there and come to me. And that's how powerful the word of God is. When a person, man, when a person is obedient and they take the word of God in, God will sustain you. God will bring life, health to your flesh and strength in your bones. God will bring healing to your body. God will bring you deliverance. God will bring you blessings. God will allow himself to be known by you and for you to help others. People got it again, like, I truly did not understand how the word of God could do this. How, how can the word be alive and, and powerful and, and sharper than each other's sword? Until I began to use the word, and even only myself, but I began to encourage other people. And I saw how the words would affect other people and how the words would bring healing to other people. Can I tell you something, man? When you see a person that is being oppressed by a spirit, and you see how the word of God has effect. I mean, that'll, that'll really change you. That'll bring up your faith like there's no tomorrow. Amen. But you see that the word of God, it works. People of God, the word of God works. People of God, the word of God still heals. People of God, the word of God still delivers. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, now and forever, which means his word is the same yesterday, today, now, forever. All that's required is that you put your faith in his word and God will do the rest. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. Amen. Yeah. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering for he who has promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word amen so the word of god amen it's not just about reading it it's not just like you read it and you leave it no the word of god you got to hold you got to hold on to it tightly amen like <laughs> like you, you ever see uh like kids fight over food and stuff like that amen you know like that's my cookie that's my cookie that's my you know? And they get into it, right? If one wants one, the other one wants one. Anybody in the house of God, see a lot of parents laughing at me because you know it's true, right? You have to hold on to that word just like that. Like, this is mine. This is my promise. Hey, you, you, get, your, you get your own promise. This is my promise. This is my promise. Because can I tell you something? As quickly as you take the word in, the devil wants to take the word out. Because he knows that's the key to your blessing and to your victory. Amen? John 15, 7 says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So again, why is the enemy trying to steal the promise of God? Because it is directly connected to you receiving everything that you ask for in prayer. Jesus here says it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you have them in your heart, you can ask me whatever you want and it will be done for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Matthew 13, three. Remember I told you, Jesus told a story about this. Jesus said, he, he told them many things in parables saying, listen carefully. A sower went out to sow seed in his field. Amen. This is the field right here. This is your field right here. And as he sowed some seed, some fell beside the road between the fields and the birds came and they ate it. Other fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And at once they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns and thorns came up and choked them out. Other seed fell on good soil and yielded grain. Some a hundred times as much some 60 times as much, some 30. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Then the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the crowds in parables? Jesus replied to them, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has spiritual wisdom, because he has receptive to God's word, to him will be given and will richly abundantly supply. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom, because he has de devalued God's word, 
even that what he has will be taken away. So look here, Jesus is making a very important point to the person who devalues God's word. I was that person. So don't think that I'm like, well, he's saying, you know, no, I was that person because I'm telling you because I was that person, because I was young, because I was foolish, because I didn't care about God's word. I didn't care to hear God's word. I didn't care to know about God's word. I didn't, I hated when people preach God's word to me. I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> what a fool that I was, people of God. Because when the time came and I was hurt and I was lost, I would do anything and everything I could to take as much of that word into myself so that I could find my, my value again. Does anybody, anybody ever felt unvaluable? Anybody ever felt lost? Anybody ever felt dirty like you weren't worth it? Anybody ever felt broken, broken heart, broken spirit? I think we've all been there. And I promise you one thing, the only thing that picked me up was hearing Jesus tell me time and time again that he loved me. Time and time again that he came to bring me life with all its abundance, amen. And that is what lifted me up out of the pits of the darkness and restored me to the place where God wanted me to be. By knowing and believing what God said about me, not what my friends said about me, not what my parents said about me, not what this person said, but what God said about me. Amen. So Jesus here, of course, you got to love Jesus because he doesn't just leave him hanging. He actually tells him what it means. Amen. So Matthew 13, 18 says, listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom regarding salvation and does not understand or grasp it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one whom seed was sown beside the road. Then the one whom seed was sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and at once welcomes it with joy. Yet he has no substantial root in himself, but is only temporary when pressure or persecution comes because of the word. Immediately he stumbles and falls away, abandoning the one who is the source of salvation. And the one whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries, the distractions of the world, the deceitfulness of superficial pleasures and delight, and the riches choke the word, and he yields no fruit. And the one whom seed was sown on the good soil is the one who hears the word and understands it and grasps it and indeed bears fruit and yields some a hundred times as much as was sown, some 60 times and some 30. Amen. So look, Jesus here, he says, he makes it very clear. Look, some people, they, they receive, they'll, they'll hear it in church. They'll hear it from somebody and they'll take it. They'll, they'll, they'll take it. They'll receive it. But it establishes no root. And as soon as they leave this place, the birds of the air, which represents Satan, come and they pick up the seed. Some take it and they receive it with joy. They're like, man, they're excited. Anybody ever been excited? Oh, man, God's going to do this. They get prayed for. They get the altar. Oh, man, hey, God's going to do this for you. God, oh, man, they leave on fire. But as soon as they go out, the pressures and tests that come. Because can I tell you something? Pressures and tests will come because of the word. You think the devil wants you to have what God has for you? Do you truly believe, believe that the devil is like, yeah, go ahead and let him have whatever God says about him. Let, let him have it. No, no. As soon as you leave this place and as quickly as you take the word in with joy, the devil is out there waiting to what? I need to take that word away from him. I need to stop him from believing. I don't want to hear him pray. I don't want him to hear him quote the word of God. I don't want to see him with joy. I don't want him to receive healing. I don't want him to be blessed. I don't want his family to be delivered. I don't want him to stop drinking. I don't want him to stop doing drugs. I don't want him to stop watching pornography. I don't want him to do any of those things. I want to keep him a prisoner. And if I can take that word away and I can take that out of his heart and take his joy, that he will continue to be a prisoner. But to the one that holds. Everybody say holds. holds. <laughs> Amen. Um, anybody ever see a, a, a gladiator? Anybody in the house of God? All the men are like, yeah, all right, boss, let's go watch gladiator, okay? I love because they're, they're all in a, in a circle together, right? And he tells them, hold the line. He's like, hold the line, stay with me. He says, whatever comes out of these doors, whatever, whatever enemy comes out of these doors, we stick a, a better chance of survival if we stick together, right? So he says, stay with me stay united with me and see and that's like God God is saying whatever whatever comes at you when you leave this church whatever comes at you when you leave this place you have a better chance of staying if you stay with me if you will stay with me if you abide in me if your word is stay with me if you're united to me you have a better chance of succeeding if you stick together if we stick together if my word abides in you and you abide in me you can get through this battle and not only will you get through the battle but you'll receive the blessings and the victory 
People of the God, the word says, praise be to God who leads us in triumph, in victory, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So look, we're not fighting from a place of defeat. We're not, we're not defeated. We're fighting from a place of victory, people of God. Praise be to God who leads me in triumph and victory in Christ Jesus. Lord. Come on, can I get a witness in the house of God? One more scripture. Can you take it, people of God? 2 Samuel 23, 10. Remember I said this, you have to hold on to the word of God. Hold on to the promises of God. Everybody say, hold on. Second Samuel 20, 15 says, Eleazar, this is one of David's mighty men. He says, Eleazar stood up and struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day and the people were turned after him only to take the spoil of the slain. So what I, what I want to show you is this story because remember that the word of God is a sword. Anybody in the house of God, the word of God is a sword. This man, Eleazar, he said he was fighting all day long. Until his, his muscles and his nerves were, clean. it says the sword was stuck to his hand. You couldn't pry the sword. Why? Because that sword was his life. And he had to kill enemies, killing Philistines all day long. And when they came to find him, he couldn't even release the sword. Because that's how tightly he held on to that weapon. So you, in turn, people of God, you have to hold on to the word like Eleazar. Amen. With the word of God, you become stuck to you. No one can take it out of your hand. The enemy can't come and yell like a roaring lion and take the word out of your hand and steal the promise of God out of your heart. Amen. But you got to keep swinging and you got to keep slaying. You got to keep proclaiming. You got to keep confessing the word of God until that giant falls. It doesn't matter what your giant is. If your giant is sickness, Jesus, by your stripes, he is, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're like, well, I'm trying, I'm struggling with this. I'm saying, well, God will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, I don't know if, if my family's falling apart. Well, can I tell you something? The Lord can restore. The Lord can heal. The Lord can bring back the prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters. But somebody's got to pray. Somebody's got to profess the word. Somebody's got to believe for the sons and daughters to come back. Who's praying? Who's believing? Well, I want to get a promotion at work. Are you praying? Are you believing? Are you decreeing the promises of God? Well, I want healing for my body. Hey, man, are you believing? If that was you and you needed healing, you know what I would be doing? I'd be reading the word of God. Lord, by your stripes I'm healed. Lord, your words are life, health to my flesh, strength to my bones. Until what? Until the Lord came to rain righteous on me, to deliver me, to heal me, to bless me, to take me out of whatever situation I was in. That's what I would do because that's what we're supposed to do, people of God. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Go ahead and stand to your feet, people of God. I'm going to open the altar, amen, to anybody that needs prayer, amen. If you need prayer afterwards, please come. Let us pray with you, amen. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. And the Lord is here to heal, and the Lord is here to deliver, amen. Lord, we just bless your holy name one more time, God. And we give you honor and glory and pray. Father, I have spoken the words that you have given me to speak, God. I pray that those out there have received it and that the word has fallen on good soil, Father God. Not the, not the road, Father God, not the thorns, Father God, and the thistles, but that the word of God has fallen on the hearts on good soil. They received it with joy and faith, and they will not just receive 30, 60, but a hundredfold return, Father God, upon those who cling to the word of God. Lord, let your words abide in them and them abide in you, that the promises of God can be fulfilled, that miracles, signs, and wonders will follow them as believers in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank you to those that need healing in the bodies. You already paid the price. And I thank you for the finished and the perfect work of the cross of Calvary, Father God. Thank you for your nail-pierced hands and feet and the stripes on your back and the spear in your side, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for victory. 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 With every eye closed, every head bowed, if there's anyone here today Amen. Who has never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. I would like to give you an opportunity at this moment. Amen. If you would say, Lord, I, I, Pastor, I don't know Jesus. I've never heard of Jesus. But you heard his name today. You heard that he loves you today. You heard that he's waiting for you. Amen. 
and that's you and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and start that journey in that relationship with him, I want you to just raise your right hand. That's you. Nobody looking around. Amen. But if that's you and you want to pray, I want you to raise your right hand for a moment that I can pray with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, just pray with me a simple prayer of faith, amen, and receive the Lord into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I need a Savior. Father, I know that I have failed you in my words, in my deeds, in my actions, in my thoughts, maybe in my lifestyle, God, Lord. But I'm grateful, Lord, for the mighty blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses me of all my unrighteousness and now gives me access to the throne room of God. I receive you into my heart, Lord, to be my savior and to be my king for life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I'm gonna speak just a prayer of, of, of blessing for you and protection. If you do need prayer, please stay and come to the front. Me, Eliab, Ivan, Maricela, we'll step here in the front and we'll pray with you, amen. Go ahead and lift your hands for the blessing. Father, bless your people and keep them and cause your face to shine on them. Turn your countenance towards them and give them the favor of your face. Lord, they're blessed in the cities, blessed in the fields, blessed coming and blessed going. And all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Father, cover them with the mighty blood of Jesus Christ. Cover their homes, cover their families. Father, set angels around them to watch over them and to protect them in their households. Bless them, bless their children and their children's children. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And if you need prayer, we're going to stay up here for a few minutes. Amen.